This is a postgraduate pediatric orthopedic video series. I'm Satali Shraida. I'm a pediatric orthopedic surgeon with a special interest in pediatric hip surgery. In this video, I'll take you on how to interpret infant hip ultrasound images. And this is part of chapter four of the postgraduate pediatric orthopedic book. Hip ultrasound has become the golden standard, not only for diagnosis, but also for monitoring of hip dysplasia in children. It can visualize bones, cartilage, and ligament. That's why it is superior to x-ray in the first few months of life. It's also dynamic. It can visualize the femoral head within uh, the socket. Currently, there are uh, four methods in a practice. A graph method was introduced in 1980 by Professor Graf. It's probably the most popular uh, one. Then Harker method, which was introduced in 1984. Uh, it's based on the concept of femoral head coverage. Then Turiansen introduced his method 1989, which rely on the femoral head circumference within the dynamic hip screening. And the last is Suzuki, which was introduced 1991, which based on a uh, scanning of both hips at the same time, as shown in the picture. A few studies have compared uh, these uh, four methods in terms of reliability, sensitivity, and specificity, the inter-observer and intra-observer errors, and reproducibility. And graph method came on top with most of these uh, characteristics. One of the reasons why graph method is severe to other methods because it has been heavily standardized in terms of performance the test itself, in terms of reading the images, and reporting the outcome. In this image here, we can see the astabulum. The human astabulum is more shallow anteriorly than posteriorly, and this is part of a human evolution. Professor Graf uh, emphasizes how important to measure hips and compare hips in the same place. This is a place he called it the standard plane, which this line here. It is a two millimeter area in the middle of the socket, exactly. If you measure at the front, it will probably underestimate the coverage. If you measure at the back, probably it's and uh, overestimate the coverage. How do you know we are in the standard plane? There are many methods, but one of them is to look at the iliac bone shadow. If the iliac bone shadow is straight, probably we are the we are in the middle of the uh, socket or parallel to the uh, iliac bone, as in this image here. If it is, uh, if the image goes through uh, anteriorly at the front part of the estabulum, you can see the iliac bone shadow is moved toward the pro and lean forward. And conversely, if it goes at the back, posterior to the standard plane, the iliac bone shadow it looks like a, a human nose. To further standardize things, Professor Graf introduced two checklists, checklist one and checklist two. Uh, checklist one is uh, important nine structures that we need to identify in every image to consider suitable for uh, diagnosis. These nine structures is the chondroosseous border, femoral head, synovial fold, joint capsule, labrum, the cartilaginous part of the roof, the bony part of the roof, the bony rim, which is a turning point between concavity and convexity of the roof, and the allium. We'll go through these nine structures in the coming uh, minutes. So uh, in this image here, we have, this is uh, a normal hip ultrasound, and this is the diagrammatic prediction of this image. The nine structures we talked about is the chondroosseous border, which is the junction between the bony part of the femur and the cartilaginous part of the femur. Then the second part is the femoral head. Then the synovial fold, which is the attachment of the capsule to the uh, to the neck of the femur at this area where the synovium and the capsule create a fold. That's why it's called the synovial fold. And this would lead you to the capsule here. Then the labrum, this triangular segment here. 
then the cartilaginous part of the bone uh, of the roof. This is in the future when the child gets older, this become ossified. Then the bony roof. The lower part of the bony roof, we call it lower limb. Then we have the turning point here. And we have the allium here. Okay, I'm going to repeat these because really these are important structures. Chondrosis border here. Fumarole head here. You can see it start ossifying here. So probably the child around three, four months time. Okay, the synovial fold here. You have the capsule here, and here is the labrum. The cartilaginous roof here, the bony roof here, the lower part of the bony roof called lower limb. And this is concave, concave, concave. Here it starts turning into convex. So the turning point is here. And usually, lateral to the turning point, usually there's a caustic shadow. Can you see this gap here? We call this acoustic shadow because the ultrasound beam come here, hit here, and it create a shadow behind it. So usually, to the lateral uh, or to the medial actually side of the point, uh, the turning point is acoustic shadow, and you have the allium here and straight. So these are the important uh, checklists. I'm often asked how I'm certain this is the labrum, and usually. Usually there are some features that help me to, to be confident this is a labrum. Number one, labrum always resting on the femoral head. And this part is resting on the femoral head. Labrum is always inside the capsule. This is the capsule and inside. And usually there's a bit of shadow between them. And again, you can see this is the capsule and this is the shadow here. So it is inside the capsule. A labrum always distal to the cartilaginous roof. This is the cartilaginous roof and this is the stilted. So I'm confident this is my labrum. Now the turning point is important concept because it identifies a lot of important things in the classification. So if you look at this image here, this is ultrasound image and our uh, checklist one, this is a chondrosis border, femoral height, synovial fold, capsule, labrum here, cartilaginous roof, bony roof, concavity to convexity, and here is my turning point, and I have the uh, the, alliac, the allium straight line here. So this is a uh, checklist one is perfect. Uh, the turning point is the change between this one and this one, as you can see it here. I usually use what I call the 10P8 uh, to help identify the bony uh, the turning point. If you put the 10p, it follow the concavity of the uh, bony roof till this is this area here when it start to come off up, and this is the turning point. Now checklist two. Professor Graf introduced checklist two to be absolutely sure that uh, my image is in the standard plane. Uh, checklist has three important structures of the nine structures we come across earlier. We have the lower limb, which is the lowest brightest part of the bony roof here, this area here. Then we have the uh, plane, which is the adiac uh, bone shadow. It must be straight. And we have the labrum here. And we, we knew how to be confident this is a labrum. So if we have checklist one met and checklist two met, these images are usable. Otherwise, uh, you can discard them and repeat it. So according to graph uh, a classification, there are two. There are four types of hip. There's type one, type two, type three, and type four. However, this was modified later by introducing graph type D which will uh, explain this later, why this has happened. And when we face with any ultrasound image, whether in a practice or an exam, you have three questions to ask yourself. Is the scan usable? Is the hip centered? Is more than half of the femoral head covered by the bony roof? To answer the first question is easy. 
checklist one, checklist two. If they are met, then the scan is usable. Is the hip centered? Uh, centered is a translation of uh, uh, not subluxed. Decentered is subluxed. Centered, uh, uh, decentered is subluxed. Centered is not subluxed. The, uh, the answer is yes. If the, fem uh, if the femoral head is not fitting with the socket and the turning point uh, or the labrum become uh, less To answer the, uh, the question whether the hip is centered or not is really not an easy answer and we need to confirm it later with the, uh, with the angles but in general, in general, if the femoral head fitting nicely with the socket, if the labrum below the turning point, usually this is centered. If the hip later subluxed and moved away from the socket, it usually push the labrum higher and higher initially reach to the level of the labrum and this is where beta angle become 90 degree and later we'll, we'll explain this further and later even if it's dislocated even higher it will push the labrum above the turning point but in general if you see the labrum below the turning point the hip is probably centered or not subluxed So we'll go in each type now, uh, type one, as we said, uh, it is centered, which means the femoral head sitting nicely in the socket and the turning point is above the labrum. And if we draw a line of the turning point, we see more than 50% of the head is under uh, the bony socket or under the bony roof. Type two, exactly like type one, but here uh, uh, the, the coverage, the bony coverage is less than 50% but we have the labrum less than the bony roof uh, and the, the hip is nicely sitting with the, within the socket. Type three, where the hip starts subluxing. As the head is subluxing, it will push the labrum outward and upward to the stage when it starts to become at the same level of the turning point. And later we learn to measure beta angle by when the beta, when the a labrum at the same level of the beta angle uh, of the turning point usually the beta angle is 90 degrees or above however in type 3 the cartilaginous roof and its coverage they slope upward in this way okay to convert it to type 4 the cartilaginous slope downward or at least horizontal so this is type 4 so in summary, type a graph type one hip is centered and the bony coverage is more than 50%. Type two is centered, but the bony coverage is less than 50%. And this is makes sense because if the bony coverage mainly cartilaginous, the force can push the cartilage upward, can deform the cartilage and can cause dislocation. Graph three is already decentered, the hips already subluxing and the cartilaginous roof a, a push upward or the slope of the cartilaginous roof it's slanting upward while graph 4 it is decentered with the cartilaginous roof sloping down or at least horizontal these are the four types of hips uh, this is uh, another pictures put them all together type 1 it is centered more than 50 percent inside the bony roof type 2 it is still centered but less than 50 percent inside Type 3, it is decentered. You can see the labrum at the same level uh, of the uh, turning point, but the cartilaginous roof is slanting upward. And type 4, it is decentered and the roof is slanting downward. Again, these are the images of four types. Type 1, this is the chondrosius border, femoral head, synovial fold, capsule, labrum, cartilaginous roof bony roof this is the lower limb this is turning point and you can see good acoustic shadow uh, uh, inside of it and the plane and this is my turning point is above the labrum and if i draw a line from the turning point we see most of the hip inside the car uh, inside the bony roof in contrast to type 2 here chondrosis border femoral head 
Sign of fold, capsule, labrum, cartilaginous roof, bony roof. This is the lower limb. This is turning point, and this is the plane. Turning point is above the labrum, but when you draw a line from the uh, from the turning point down, you see most of the head outside. Type three, you can see start decentering now. Okay, so uh, you have the chondrosis border, femoral head, synovial fold, capsule labrum is here labrum you can see at the same level of the turning point here but we haven't reached the turning point yet so we have the labrum here cartilaginous roof bony roof lower limb turning point is here and the plane here and you can see the turning point almost the same level of the labrum but here you can see the control uh, the cartilaginous roof slanting upward so this is type 3 compared to type 4 which is slanting downward maybe horizontal Again, you can see the chondrosis border. Always, always do your checklist before you comment on any type. Chondrosis border, femoral head, <coughs> synovial fold, capsule. Labrum is difficult to see, but somewhere here. Uh, yeah, somewhere in this area here. Uh, <coughs> a cartilaginous roof, bony roof. Turning point is really difficult to find where the turning point is, but maybe here. In this area here you can see it's way below the labrum which is here and the uh, roof is a flat or even downward now we move to uh, graph hip subtypes for this we need to know two more factors the age alpha and beta angle Uh, to measure alpha and beta angle, we need to draw three lines. The first line is the baseline, which is a line parallel to the uh, aliac crest shadow. There, it is perpendicular in this way. Uh, the second thing we need to draw is the acetabular roof line or the bony uh, line, which is measured uh, stretch from the lower end, just touching the lower end, tangential to the acetabular roof, and just touching the turning point. So this is the bony roof line. Then the cartilaginous roof line, which is the center of the labrum to the turning point. So uh, the bony roof line and the cartilaginous roof line, they meet at the turning point. By putting these lines together, it will give you the alpha angle and beta angle. Alpha angle is the bony roof line and the baseline, this one here. And the, cart uh, the beta angle is the intersection between the baseline and the cartilaginous roof line. Please notice that these lines don't meet at the same point. The bony roof line and the cartilaginous roof line, they meet at the turning point, but this one uh, usually not. Uh, however, mathematically or geometrically, even if you move this line to meet here, the angle won't change. Now, having measured uh, alpha and beta angle, we can do uh, the subtyping of uh, the, the type of hip in the front of us. Again, these are the types of hips. We have one, two, three, four. And to be able to identify type one, two, three, four, we don't need alpha or beta angle. However, these confirm, these angles confirm. For D, D we need to know the alpha and beta angle. So for type one hip, alpha angle is above 60 degrees, regardless what the beta angle is. However, there is observation that some of these hips have beta angle less than 55, some of them above 55. The significance of this is still not established. Maybe, maybe related to the future hip development and people with the, uh, more uh, beta angle, uh, they might develop a hip impingement, but we are not sure. For a type two, there are three types of type 2, type 2 A, B, and C. For type 2 A and B, the alpha angle is 50 to 59, and the difference between them only is the age. If the age above 3 months, it is type 2B. If it's under 3 months, it is type 2A. Type 2C is the alpha angle is between 43 to 49, but beta angle is less than 77. Okay, I'll repeat it. Uh, type 2A is uh, both uh, alpha angle is 50 to 59, 
beta angle less than 77 and the difference between them is type 2p is the age of the child is more than a three month type 2c the alpha angle is 43 to 49 with a uh, beta angle less than 77. at this stage this is uh, the sonographer can push the baby thigh and if they manage to push the beta angle to make it above 77 we call this a type 2c and a staple if no uh, if the gentle push doesn't make the beta angle change or keep still under 77 we call this is type 2 c stable now this is different from type d type d has alpha angle similar to type 2 c but the beta angle already above 77. in fact in the initial modification type 2 was type 2 a b c and d but keeping type to uh, keeping D within type 2 it, it, it will violate its definition type 2 is the hip is centered while here the hip is not centered because beta angle is above 77 in a way it's reaching to uh, the level of the uh, bony rim or, or the turning point sorry okay so I repeat type D is similar to type uh, alpha angle is similar to a uh, type 2 C but the beta angle already above 77 then we move to type 3 and 4 and both of them alpha angle is less than 43 but the difference between them one is the cartilaginous roof sloped upward and one is downward and this will complete the uh, the classification of hip uh, according to graph method to aid memory uh, professor graph introduced what he calls uh, the sonometer sonometer is a ruler uh, uh, made of uh, alpha angle drawn on the top and beta angle at the bottom with some graphic representations what is on this ruler uh, with uh, type uh, 1 the, uh, the alpha angle is above 60 and no matter what the beta angle is this is type 1 with type 2 uh, you have the uh, type 2 a and b the alpha angle between 50 to 60 the difference between them is the age if it's under three month old this is type 2a if it's above three month old this is type 2b however professor graph further classified type 2a into plus and minus uh, and this is based on the measurement for that week so if you look at this uh, line here this is the age in weeks zero six weeks seven weeks nine weeks eleven weeks twelve weeks and this is the area where we're talking about 2a because type 2b is above 12 weeks so say you're at six weeks if you measured the alpha angle and it was 55 this is perfect if it's under 55 we call this is a type 2a minus if it is above 55 this is type 2a plus again for example if you measure at nine weeks and you find 55 angle this is type 2a minus then a uh, type 2c alpha angle is 43 to 50 and the beta angle under 77 at this stage the sonographer slightly push the thigh or the hip out and he if he managed to get the beta angle above 77 we call this a type 2 type 2c and stable if he cannot get above 77 this is type 2c stable type d is the same as type 2c uh, in the sense that beta uh, alpha angle is between 43 and 50 but beta angle is above 77 that's why type d now is a, a stage or, or a group on its own because the hip here is d center the hip is outside or starting to become outside the socket and the last group is type 3 and 4 in which the hip is already decentered the difference between them is that the cartilaginous roof pushed upward in type 3 and horizontal or pushed downward in type 4 both of them the alpha angle is less than 43 uh, and this will bring us to the end of this video in which we looked at a graph hip classification in a bit of details I hope you find it useful and all the best for your exams.